I recently uh, had to write an article for the Give Him 15 that Dutch Sheets does every day. And, uh, and writing an article for Dutch Sheets is like playing basketball with Michael Jordan. I have never felt so intimidated in all my life. And I told him so. I said, <laughs> and I sent it to him. He texted me yesterday. He said, uh, he said, thank you for sending that to me. He said, I'm going to read it on the plane. I think he's in Shreveport right now and uh, so I haven't heard from him yet I don't know what that means <laughs> maybe it's good I don't know but I, I wrote on the pioneer because the pioneer spirit is something that's very dear to my heart I, I believe for Florida being the forerunner state and being the very first state that was settled not as a state but the very first region that was settled in our nation long before Jamestown was ever settled. Florida was settled. There's a spirit of the pioneer that is on the state of Florida, which if you live in Florida, that means that you're a pioneer. One of the things I'm not, and it bugs some people big time, is I'm not a settler. I, I, I don't like the status quo. Very seldom do I like the status quo. I like to ruffle things up and move things in a different direction especially when it comes to tradition and the spirit of religion. And so I'm going to talk to you briefly tonight, and I'll probably expand on this message some more. I like the, I like the uh, graphic, Daniel. Uh, expand on it some more. But I looked up the dictionary. I went to Merriam-Webster Dictionary. I didn't like their definition. So I went to the Pioneer's definition, and that was Noah Webster, his 1828 Dictionary. And the word pioneer, he defines it this way, the art and practice of war. Who would have ever thought that a pioneer is the art and practice of war? But you think about the men and women who blazed the trail, whether it was in America or whether it was in another nation, they had to go into war many times to deal with the adversaries that were there. Many of them were led by Holy Spirit. I believe that in America, Holy Spirit led the pioneers of Christopher Columbus and others from Europe over into this region. I believe Holy Spirit led them that they were pioneers. I know there's a lot of bad things happening but I'm, uh, that happened during that time, but I'm not here to focus on the bad. I'm here to focus on the good, okay? I think we spend too much time sin-focused and not enough time God-focused. It's the art and practice of war are one whose business is to march with or before an army, to repair the road or clear it of obstructions, work at entrenchments, or form mines for destroying an enemy's work. It's one that goes before to remove obstructions or prepare the way for another. I remember for several years they were building this bridge across Pineda Causeway, going across the top of it, and they were rerouting us, and the roads were rough, and, and every time you would ride through there, you know, you were close to cursing, maybe you did, but you were close to it if you didn't, and it just seemed like they never would finish, but have you been across it lately? It has a way that has been prepared for us that we don't have to set up a crossing now, waiting for the train to go by. We can go right across the top of it. I'm so glad they did that. I didn't like it when they were doing the construction. This is what a pioneer or a forerunner is like. They go into a place or region and tear things up. And you'll wonder why in the world are they doing that? Because they've got to get the blueprint. They've got the blueprint in their heart. A pioneer always has the blueprint in their heart. And they never do it like the church of the past. They have a blueprint in their heart and they will begin following that blueprint even when everybody's telling them they're wrong. They will follow that blueprint. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5 in the New American Standard, the voice, a voice is calling, clear the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low, and let the rough ground become plain, and the rugged terrain brought a broad valley. 
Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Martin Luther King used this verse of scripture in his I Have a Dream speech. He was such a pioneer himself. If you ever look at the history, and I have of Martin Luther King, I've studied it, him quite in a lot of detail. When he, was, get, when he gave that I Have a Dream speech, before he started with the I Have a Dream, he was giving a cut and dry NAACP speech that he had prepared. And there was a lady behind him by the name of Sister Jackson. She was part of the choir. And she was standing behind him. And she said, tell them about the dream. She had heard him preach a message about the dream. And then he started, I have a dream. And see, God puts dreams into the heart of a pioneer. If you show me a person that's not dreaming, I'll show you a person that's a settler and not a pioneer. Pioneers dream. They're not satisfied with the status quo. They go in and they prepare a way for the Lord to come in. If you read this same verse of Scripture, Isaiah 43 through 5 in the Passion Translation, it says, A thunderous voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for Yahweh's revival. This is what pioneers do. Make a highway straight through the desert for our God. Every valley will be raised up, every mountain brought low. The rugged terrain will become level ground and the rough places made a plain. Then Yahweh's radiant glory will be revealed, unveiled. And all humanity will experience together. Believe it, for Yahweh has spoken his decree. Malachi talks about the pioneer. Malachi 3 verses 1 and 2 out of the Message Bible. Look, I am sending my messenger on ahead to clear the way for me. Suddenly out of the blue, the leader you have been looking for will enter his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant. The one you've been waiting for, look, he's on his way. A message from the mouth of the God of the angel armies. I like it because the first sentence talks about the pioneer. It says, I'm going to send my messenger. He's going to go ahead of the Lord. He's going to prepare a way. He's going to clear the way. He's going to tear things up. He's going to make the rough places smooth. He's going to make the crooked places straight. He's going to bring down every mountain, exalt every valley. That's what a pioneer does. And all of a sudden then, the Lord, bam, comes to his temple. Just like that. Unexpected. Sometimes a pioneer's work becomes weary. Because he toils and toils or she toils and toils. Based on the blueprint that's inside their heart. They won't go by what Southeastern College said. They won't go by what ORU said. They won't go by what their denomination says. They will go by the blueprint that is on the inside of their heart. Glory to God. Matthew 3 talks about a pioneer again. This is out of the Passion Translation. It was at this time that John the Baptist began to preach in the desert of Judah. His message was this. Heaven's kingdom is about to appear. And you better keep turning away from evil and turn back to God. Isaiah was referring to John when he prophesied. A thunderous voice, this is in Isaiah 40. A thunderous voice, one will be crying out in the wilderness. Prepare yourself for the Lord's coming and level a straight path inside the hearts for Him. As I was studying all this this week and writing that article, I couldn't help but think about our former president, Donald Trump. One misunderstood man, but a man who was bringing freedom to our nation. And preparing a way for God to come in. The church has never had a greater ally than when President Trump. Neither has Israel had a greater ally than when President Trump was president. He was a pioneer. That's why the, well, the people up in, I won't call them what I wanted to call them. People up in D.C. didn't like him. You either loved him or you hated him. There was no in-between with this guy. And, um... That religious spirit says, Brother Ken, you shouldn't get political. I'm not. I'm getting governmental. 
Here's some traits of a pioneer. Now, I've got 11 of them here, and I probably could have gotten more. I just kind of ran out of time. Pioneers challenge the status quo. They go against the norm, calling for the real encounters with Yahweh that produce fruits of righteousness. This is what John the Baptist said. Show me fruit that are meat for repentance. Don't tell me that you have Abraham as your father. I want to see the fruits that you belong to God. I, I'm just going to say it. We may go past 8 o'clock tonight, okay? I'm sorry. This county, the Christians in this county, are some of the most gossiping people in the state of Florida. I have been railed big time, but I consider it an honor. I have been talked about big time in this county because people misunderstand me. They misunderstand the love that I have for the state of Florida and for this county. We challenge, pioneers challenge the status quo. And I'm challenging the gossipers to stop gossiping in the name of the prophetic. Because you're giving the prophetic a bad name when you do that. You say, the Lord showed me, but it ain't nothing but gossip. And it's you turning a critical eye toward the body of Christ. It's wrong. See, that's what pioneers do. They call it out. And you, you have time to repent, okay? The Lord hasn't come yet. You can even repent tonight. Number two, pioneers call for awakening revival that impacts society and brings reformation that causes transformation. Amen. It's a good word there. We, we still haven't got past the gossip in hand. I still feel that spirit here. I don't like that spirit. I don't like gossiping. You shouldn't do it in the name of the prophetic. Amen. And my wife won't like this, but put that in your pipe and smoke it. She doesn't like when I say that. The pioneer is just like the Isaiah of chapter 22, 22. Pioneers opens new doors and closes doors that need to be closed. He says in Isaiah 22, 22, Then I will set the key of the house of David on his shoulder. And when he opens, no one will shut. And when he shuts, no one will will open. It's what pioneers do. Pioneers are sent. They have a sense of being sent. Even though you may have been born and raised in a city, God has sent you to that city. Say, I'm sent. I love the crackers of Florida. You, you know what a cracker is, don't you? What is a cracker? Somebody born and raised in Florida is a Florida cracker. They're Floridians. Now, you have to be born and raised here to be a cracker. How many crackers we have here tonight? We have several crackers. <laughs> the re they, they were initially called crackers because the cowboys, the original cowboys, the original cowboys were from Florida. And they would round up the cattle in the Okeechobee and Kissimmee Basin and drive them to the market. These were wild cattle. And they had whips, and they would crack the whips. And that's how they became known as crackers. And so later on, they became known as people who were born and raised in Florida. It's taken on that flavor now. I love the crackers of Florida. You know why I love them? One, they, they, have, they have a certain way about them that's unlike any other state or people from any other state. But not only that, a born-again believer cracker has more authority than they realize that they have to bring transformation to the state of Florida. They are pioneers. If you ever want to see a, a, a cracker camp, go to Lake Kissimmee State Park when the cracker camp is open. And and go in there and they, they, they do a rendition of the crackers. 
We took our kids one time and, a, and another couple from our church years and years ago, back when our kids were small. And he stayed in the rendition of the cracker. He had an old, old uh, coffee pot sitting on a, on a fire, on a real fire. It had real coffee in it, and he's offering it to people. And out on Lake Kissimmee, all of a sudden, you could hear this airboat. And Henry tried to bring him out of his character. He said, what's that noise out there? And the cracker said, what's the matter with you fellow? Ain't you ever heard of Skeeters? <laughs> if you're a cracker, you're a pioneer, you're not a settler. If you're in Florida, you're a pioneer. They are sent. They're sent to every mountain of society. You see, many times we just put pastors and apostles and prophets just inside the church. But inside each seven mountain, the government, there are, are apostles. I believe that Donald Trump was an apostle sent to Washington, D.C., sent to this nation. I believe that Ronald Reagan was a prophet sent to our nation. Some of the others were just ungodly people. And they got put there by the enemy. But pioneers are sent into all of the seven mountains of society. There are pastors in those mountains. They're not just in the church. But they're there also. You go to universities and you find a praying group of students, you will find an ecclesia right there in that university. Pioneers are probably some of the mis most misunderstood people because they're not settlers. They don't like the fluff of the local church, the facade. They like the real church, which is an ecclesia and its people. Pioneers have a vision that's beyond average. They have a seer gift for where God has called them to. And they don't see everybody's problems. They see what God wants to do. And again, if you're seeing everybody's problems, you're seeing with an eye of criticism. You need to look the way the Lord looks. Amen. <laughs> they, have a, they are seers. They see what the Lord wants to do and they do it. They are watchmen, prophets. And they watch over regions and territories and they see when the Lord's coming. They see what the Lord wants to do. And they begin preparing the way for the Lord to do that. They start tearing things up for the Lord to come in. Pioneers, modern day ecclesia pioneers, they trumpet the message of Joel 2 and Acts 2. Joel 2 where he talks about this is that. He talks about the day coming. When the Spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. Acts 2 takes up Joel's word. Peter takes up the same word that Joel preached. And he preaches it on the day of Pentecost. So much for preaching somebody else's message. Even Jesus did that. Did you know that? John the Baptist came out saying what? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus' first message was what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He preached John's message. He heard John, his cousin, a forerunner, a pioneer. Pioneers and forerunners have what I call the bulldozer anointing. The bulldozer anointing. Now, you don't want to mess with the bulldozer anointing when that bulldozer is moving, Okay. Because they just put it in low and they let it go. And woe be to who's in front of it. If you see it coming, don't stand there and tell the pioneer, you can't do that here. Because they're going to bulldoze right over your golden calf. <laughs> and if, <clears throat> if they have a stump they can't move with the bulldozer, Pioneers know how to use dynamite. And they take the dynamite and use it as well. Number nine. Pioneers are connected to the roots. 
They're connected to the roots of Matthew 28, where it says, make disciples of all nations. They're connected to the roots of Mark 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. Pioneers create signs. Pioneers are aligned with the roots of Acts 2 and Acts 3. Pioneers are connected and aligned with the roots of their state and the roots of their nation. I can't tell you the number of times, not that particular flag, but a Florida flag that I draped it around me and would weep and cry over the state. I can't tell you the number of times that I've driven to Tallahassee, probably well over a hundred, to go there and pray on the 22nd floor of our capital. Cheryl got a word from the Lord the first time we went there. Because the 22nd floor in our capital, when that tall capital was built, in 19, and they moved in in 1976, they moved out of the old capital and into the new The governor was supposed to be on the top floor of the 22nd floor. And he decided that he didn't want to be up there. He wanted to be down on the plaza level with all the people. And so we visit there for the first time. I'm preaching in that floor that night. And Cheryl gets a word from the Lord. She says, you know what floor, you know where you're preaching tonight, don't you? And I said, yeah, I'm preaching at the Capitol. Isn't that so awesome? She says, no, you don't realize it. You're on the Isaiah 22, 22 floor of our state. And when we got there, the Lord spoke to me and he said, the reason this is vacant is I reserved this for the state of Florida to come here and govern the state from. Uh, or for the ecclesia of Florida. Let me rephrase that. The ecclesia of Florida to come and govern this state from. I've been there so many times making decrees over Florida making decrees over your city, making decrees over your city from, the, from up on the 22nd floor. We used to go there every year in February of every year, and we, we had what we called a state of the state address according to the kingdom of God. And we'd have 200 people come from across Florida. They would come from Miami, Pensacola, Lake City, Orlando, other places because they want to see God move in the state of Florida. So you got to get connected also. Pioneers are connected. Pioneers are change agents that press the envelope no matter what. Pioneers knock over the golden calves of religion. They knock over the golden calves of poverty. I think going over 8 o'clock. I told you I would. I need to talk about this just a moment. I had a friend of mine, there was, I, I can't go into detail, but they, in a text back and forth, they said to me, they said, I can't afford that $120 a night for a hotel. I had nothing to do with here or actually anywhere in Florida. And I said, I understand. And I said, I'm sorry you can't make it. And the Holy Spirit said, you text them back and tell them that that is a small price to pay for what God's going to do in their life. And I told them, I just flat out told them, I said, get that poverty mindset off of you and pay the $120 a night for four nights. Go ahead and pay it. Break it off of you in Jesus' name. I hate the poverty spirit. I hate it. I despise it. $120 a night is actually a moderate price for a hotel today. You know, I remember when we went and stayed in the Trump Hotel up in Washington, D.C. And, and, you know, it really tested my... It showed me that I still had some poverty spirit in me. I mean, it, it wasn't $120 a night. It was more like 300 a night, and, and that was the discounted rate. <laughs> and we stayed there three nights. And I told Cheryl, I said, I'm still going to do it. I don't care. I'm just going to do it. And after Trump was elected, I decided to go to the inauguration. I had an invitation to go to the inauguration. That means 
tuxedos. That means new dress. You won't believe what I spent for that. I'm not going to tell you because that would really challenge your prophet, your, I mean your poverty spirit. I despise any more riding in coach on an airplane. Think about it. Because once you go first class, you never want to go back to coach. You never do. I can't justify that, Brother Ken. I'll tell you what Dutch Sheets told me. Because he, he, he helped get the poverty spirit off of me. And this is what pioneers do. He and I had been in Washington, D.C. for three days praying at the Supreme Court. And it was time to come back home. And I just texted him and told him, I said, I had a great time. I said, I, I just checked on the prices of first class, and it's $100 for me to upgrade. And I said, I just can't justify that, just like that person said to me yesterday. And he texted me back, and he said, aren't you worth $100? I said, you know, that's on top of the 300 I've already spent. And he said, again, he said, aren't you worth that? And he said, just think about it. You're going to sit in first class if you pay that 100 bucks. And when you get home, you're not going to, your, joint, your back's not going to be out of joint because you've been like this the whole time. And he says, you're going to feel rested and comfortable. And so when I got to the airport, you know what I did? I put down 100 bucks to go first class. We went one time to Park City, Utah, and I'm going to close with this. It was a winter vacation. I didn't tell Cheryl I had gotten first-class seats. And I got first-class seats to fly direct all the way to uh, Salt Lake City. And it was snow on the ground about a foot deep. We got on the airplane, and she says, where are we sitting? I said, right here. She said, you got first? I said, I did. She said, you shouldn't have done that. And so we're, we, seated, we got seated. And the waitress walks up to you, and uh, not the waitress, the stewardess, and she said, Mr. Malone, what would you like to drink? Mrs. Malone, what would you like to drink? It wasn't, you want some Coca-Cola and peanuts? And then they came out and said, what do you want for breakfast? Because this was like a 6 a.m. flight. And so we had breakfast, and we're taking off and we're eating breakfast and I look over at her and I said, how do you like first class now? <laughs> you see, the church has allowed the enemy to rob us of the blessing and the favor of God because we continue to have a poverty mentality. But pioneers break out of that. Stand to